towards integration and collaboration will not only bring about a boost in the economic standing of Africa globally, but indeed opportunities for growth and development of our sub-region. We see intra-regional collaboration. We see integration of technology, systems, and policies that will facilitate ease of trade across borders. We see trust and openness. We see intra-regional and international investment opportunities from joint and consolidated efforts. We see purpose and resilience to return to our first place of pride and nationhood, where there is less reliance on foreign-made goods and services, but rather promotion of goods, services, and innovations that originate from us. What else do we see? We see a strong and vibrant regional economy, which will arise from our nations, harnessing our God-given natural and human resources, and together leveraging on each other's strengths rather than exploiting one another. We all have a role to play, and it starts from here. There must be more deliberate and focused efforts to collapse the barriers that have stifled our growth and development through public-private initiatives and interactions. In line with the vision of the President of Nigeria, General Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, to diversify the economy and promote other sectors of the economy, we believe the identified sectors to be discussed during the course of this event will be more apt. I am certain that at the end of this occasion, key stakeholders will have identified avenues for driving trade and sustainable economic growth and development via these sectors within ECOWAS member states. I would like to take advantage of the occasion to request that the ease of doing business project should extend to easing bilateral trade within the ECOWAS region. The ECOWAS trade liberalization scheme, for example, should be able to achieve more uh, than it is currently achieving. Given the significance of these four sectors to the growth of the GDP of most West African countries, it is imperative that ideas are pulled together to ensure that we identify and proffer solutions for key issues, many of which border around access to finance and funding opportunities, as well as investment opportunities. As the organizers have chosen to give priority to small and medium-sized businesses, I will encourage all present to align with this thinking and seek opportunities to create an enabling environment for the growth and sustainability of SMEs. Of particular importance is the need to find solutions for funding SMEs. You will agree with me that funding has been a major challenge for most small and medium-sized businesses in Nigeria and across West Africa. The recently launched collateral registry in Nigeria is a step in the right direction that we should all look to explore in an attempt to find a lasting solution to the funding problems of SMEs. Service providers, financiers, bankers, many of whom are members of the Nigerian Bridge Chamber of Commerce, should also embrace the opportunities to enable SMEs develop optimal funding structures in their businesses. I trust that we will all take advantage of the networking opportunities that will be available today to initiate these discussions and hopefully this will blossom into fruitful business relationships. Elsewhere, auditors at the Price Waterhouse Coopers are hoping to conclude a complex forensic investigation into the affairs of Steinhoff International by the end of this year. 
Steinoff, which has more than 40 retail brands that include Conforama and Poundland, is in a fight for survival after admitting accounting irregularities in December, wiping out about 85% of its market value and triggering a liquidity crisis. Meanwhile, the former chief executive officer of Steinoff International Holdings, Marcus Joost, may be subpoenaed to speak to South African lawmakers after he declined to appear before them for a second time. The government wants Joost to account for the near collapse of the group he helped run for almost 20 years. But an attorney representing him says he'll not go to parliament to give his account of events because the police are investigating criminal complaints against him and any statements given may undermine his right to a fair trial. Botswana-based Debswana Diamond Mining has announced a production increase of 11% to a three-year high in 2017 and expects growth this year. This comes as lower taxes in the United States leave consumers with more to spend on luxury goods. Debswana, a joint venture between the Bears and Southern African countries government, said annual production rose to 22.2 million karats last year. Sales jumped 16%, contributing to a 20% increase in earnings before interest, tax and amortization. The Bears executive vice president, Diamond Trading, Paul Rowley, says a weaker dollar had boosted diamond sales and expected global demand for diamonds to rise again this year after rising 3 to 4% in 2017. Djibouti is in talks with a French shipping company, CMA CGM, to develop a new container terminal at an initial cost of $660 million as part of efforts to expand into a sea and air transport hub for the continent. The chairman of the Djibouti Port and Free Zone Authority, Abubakar Omar Hadi, says the authority hopes to award the concession in July. The authority also plans to buy out DP Wild Stake in an existing container terminal to end a row with the Djibouti Port Operator and avoid arbitration. Djibouti's ports already serve as an entry point for cargo, which is then sent by smaller vessels uh, to ports along Africa's eastern coast. But it's now seeking to become a sea air transshipment hub for the continent. Plans are also on the way to construct a $315 million airport and expand Air Djibouti's fleet of cargo aircraft. Well, still to come on the program, a roundup of discussions at the just-concluded Africa CEO Forum in Abidjan. Do stay with us.